Welcome to JIRA 6.2 Issue Search. I'm Trainer Lori. What is JIRA Issue Search? Searching for your issues using the filtering and basic search, a little bit about the quick search, and then a little bit on the code of writing advanced searches in JIRA. Click Issues and then you can simply click to open any issue. However, with 3,724 issues, I'm not going to be able to see my issue right off the top. So instead, I can filter to find it. You have two options. You can choose Search for Issues on the Issues link, or you can click the New Filters button. First, let's look at the basic search in the ascending order search. You simply click the field name, and it changes the order by. If you click the drop-down next to it, it will show you filters, very similar to Excel. So you can see what the field names are, and if you can't see it, then just start typing it in. There's a search option. The quick search up on the navigation bar allows you to put in something quick like my. That will show all your issues assigned to you, or V for version. For example, V3 or V6.2 so you can find the version of the issues that you're working on. To get your cursor up into the quick search bar quickly, simply type the forward slash anywhere down in the area that you're working and it will automatically put your cursor up into quick search. But now we want to look at basic search. If you click on any of these options, they'll have a drop down next to it and you can see two options. You can either check to filter or you can type in and find your project based on the first few letters of your search. You can do the same thing with type. For example, standard issue types like bug or defect. Under status, and you can see the main statuses open, in progress, resolved, etc. Assignee, you can either choose from yourself or a suggested group, or you can type in a name and you can see I get several options just by typing in one name. Type in text that you seek. You can hit X to delete it, or you can hit the magnifying glass to do the search. By default, we are looking at detail view. You can see there's issues listed down the left side, but there are details on the right side. If you click on the Views option, you can change it to List View. Now a good keyboard shortcut in here is J to move to the next issue, or K to move to the previous issue. Now let's look at the Advanced Filter option. We saw the easy way to find things, and Nine times out of ten, that's exactly what you need. But if you need to filter on more fields and you have to filter in different ways, then we're going to click the word Advanced. And then that opens up this box. And it could be as simple as text with the tilde and remedy force in quotes, or it could be as advanced as what you can see in the yellow callout. So let's look at some of our options in here. For Advanced Sort, in ASC, which is ascending, remember, we can put order by and then the first field name, ascending, comma, and then the next field name, in this case key, ascending, comma. So you separate with commas and use ASC for ascending and DESC for descending. If I want filter and order, then I would, in this case, I would put in my first filter, project, equals buyer vision, and then order by in this case, create a date. By default, dates are always in descending order, so if I want it to be in ascending order, I have to type in the ASC. What if I can't remember what project it is? Well, I just type in project equals, and I'll have a drop down of options. So autocomplete is very convenient here. In this case, I chose GPS Manufacturer Express, and then I started to write what? Just because I had a space there, it automatically assumed and, or, or order by, and I can choose from the list. So I chose order by and started typing in R, and you can see all the R words that automatically came up, and I wanted rank. And then, since I chose rank, I can choose ascending or descending. So autocomplete is wonderful. All you have to do is remember the first part of what you're trying to put in. What if I want multiple field filters? Earlier we saw that we could do it in order by using the comma in between each of the fields. But now I want to filter each of the fields. So in this case I put in project equals, and I can choose from my list, in this case BPM, 
Now I use the word and. This is a Boolean and. That means it must meet both criteria. So now status field equals open. And then I can do a third, etc. And priority equals high. Of course, if you continue adding them, you may not find any records. But uh, with these three filters, I will find just the records that I'm looking for. You can also use codes in there. You saw the equals, so that means equals, or if you want to type in the word, the word is is. So if you prefer the I as, it, it, you can see it's in capital letters if it is an actual code. So equals or is. And then the tilde means contains, and you can use the word contains instead if you prefer. So what's the difference? Equals is a, an exact match. Contains means it has this word in it somehow. So if you're not exactly sure, make sure you use the contains or the tilde. The exclamation point or bang notation makes it a not equals. So in this case, not equals or not contains. The next one is empty, and you might use null if you're writing code elsewhere. It means null. So empty means nothing in it. The next one is less than and less than or equal to, and greater than and greater than or equal to, but now I've put now after it, now with the two parentheses, and that means today and in the future. Of course, if I use that now, here, it would be today and in the past. And then in. If I don't want to have to put multiple commas in there, then I, for example, in this case, I want to find any assignee named Deb, Howe, or Pete. And so I say assignee in within the list, and then in the parentheses I would put the, the list of people. So you can imagine you could put the people on your team, so I just want to find anything assigned to people uh, these by this first name. Once you've created the filter that you want and you want to use it again, then click Save As. Give it a name. It's a good idea to give it a very descriptive name, and you might even want to put your initials in front of it so you know for a fact it's yours. However, you'll be able to tell just by looking for it under My. How do I find it again? I go to Issues, Manage Filters, and I looked under My. And so there are, is, is the new filter that I just created. I hope you liked it, and feel free to subscribe to the Trainer Lori channel so you can get updates on all my training. And please click Like if you liked it. Thank you.